It's another Sunday. It's another Sunday. Another Sunday has arrived. Oh, hello there. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? I really, really hope so. First of all, can I apologize for being slightly late today? Needless to say, I have had some slight technical problems today. Once again, <laughs> many people asking about my new computer. The new computer hasn't arrived yet, unfortunately. So we are expecting the new computer to arrive sometime next week. But in the meantime, I am suffering from technical problems. So I'm fine. But my computer, unfortunately, isn't working very well. So hopefully next week we will get the new computer. And then, of course, the week after, hopefully everything will be up and running. Don't forget, I am not here next Sunday, so I won't be here next Sunday live. Please make a note of that in your diaries. But I have had some parts of my new computer delivered already. For example, here are some some cables. So I have some cables, some wires for my new computer. I just don't have the new computer yet, just yet. So I'm still waiting for the new computer. But at least I do have some cables for the new computer. All I'm waiting for now is the rest of the computer and then we can have things back to normal. I don't know about you, but I am really fed up of the way things are going at the moment with my live stream. I really, really feel so upset because my computer has not been working for a while and things are still not working properly but as i said hopefully please keep your fingers crossed for me that my computer will be working normally very soon so we are live on a sunday thanks for joining me for those who have just clicked on my picture it has been a very hectic morning i've been trying to get everything working here and of course, I've been doing my usual things, a very busy week as well. The weather today, by the way, is terrible. I wish I could show you the weather outside. It is very windy. It is very cold. It is not nice at all. And something is returning next week. Can you guess what it is? Something is returning. And it has something to do with the weather. Something is returning next week. Can you guess what it is? I will reveal the answer later. So something will be returning. Something we had a few weeks ago is coming back. <laughs> Can you guess what it is? <laughs> also, we have the live chat today. Thank you very much for joining me on the live chat. Oh, so many people are here at the moment. Let's have a look, shall we? I really do wish I'd put my reading glasses on. <laughs> Not a very good time to realise that you should have your reading glasses on, unfortunately. Tias is here. Hello, Tias. Hi there. Thank you very much for joining me. All the way from Indonesia. Also, Obaidullah, Obaidullah and Gabrielle. Also, Swan is here as well hello swan thank you very much for your lovely messages this week by the way i'm glad to see that you are enjoying my lessons and yes you are right the reason why i moved to the place i'm living in now is because i made an english lesson here so because i came to this place and i loved it so much i decided to live here so i moved here because of my English lessons. So even my my own English lessons are influencing me. Isn't that strange? Hello, everybody. Nice to see you, Duncan. Thank you, Martha. Hello, Martha. Martha in Poland. Or maybe your second name is Poland. 
Alice is here watching in Russia hello to Russia and of course this week something very special happened the Olympic Games started I went to see my mum this week I went to visit my mother and we sat for the whole afternoon watching the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games in Korea and I must admit I, I did feel a little emotional when I saw the two Koreas marching together so North Korea and South Korea they were unified under one flag who would have thought a few months ago that that would happen so yes I thought it was very very I was quite moved by it actually I found it quite lovely and another thing I would love to have one of their coats did you see those coats that they wore when they marched around the stadium those amazing white coats I want one of those coats so just in case anyone in Korea happens to have one of those coats <laughs> in in a small size could you please send it to me <laughs> because I thought those coats looked amazing I want one of those coats that the North Korean athletes were wearing uh, North and South should I say the North and South Koreans hello Mr Duncan from Italy Silvana is here hello Silvana welcome I I've got an itch do you mind if I scratch my itch I've got an itchy back wait there a moment oh oh that's better it's very annoying when you have an itch and you can't reach it and, and I, I had an itchy back just I apologize for that so yes Italy is watching also Gabrielle is here as well hi Gabrielle nice to see you here today hello Mr Duncan from Jewel Jewel 02 and also El Comandante I'm not sure if that is your is your is your name or your position I'm not sure England is a lovely country thank you Gabrielle for that the place I live in is called much Wenlock and I made a lesson here a few years ago for the the London Olympics uh, and I loved the place so much I decided to actually move here it's true I'm not I'm not making that up so I loved the place so much I decided to move here and it changed my life completely hello Mr Duncan greetings from Buenos Aires Belarusia is here hello Belarusia I am slightly late today I wasn't sure if I was going to be here because of all of the technical problems but hopefully next week my new computer will arrive and then I will start to fix all of the problems and of course don't forget next Sunday I am not here I'm not here next Sunday no live English next Sunday don't forget that I am back on the 25th hi Mr Duncan Anto hello Anto how are you doing today oh Mr Steve will be here for those wondering yes Mr Steve is on his way he's on his way he will be here around about three o'clock now I was hoping to go outside today but unfortunately the weather is so bad so terrible at the moment it's windy it is freezing cold and it was raining earlier and apparently next week can you believe next week we are going to have some snow yes more snow is on the way so apparently on Tuesday and Wednesday next week we are going to have lots of snow once more do you remember a few weeks ago we had lots of snow here and I was filming outside in the deep snow so it looks as if we might have some more and according to the weather forecast it is very heavy snow so lots of snow is heading our way it should be arriving around about Tuesday and Wednesday so two days of snow hello Mr Duncan James that's very 
that's very formal from Pedro hello Pedro nice to see so many familiar names here in fact I, I always feel quite pleased when lots of people come back to watch my lessons again because that means I'm doing something right what a lovely tracksuit Mr Duncan it's good to see you again thank you Tom Eck yes I, I look very athletic because of the Winter Olympic Games I thought I would wear something that looked very athletic the Winter Olympic Games are often seen as not being as important as the Summer Olympic Games but I think they are just as exciting to be honest and of course some of the sports that they do during the Winter Olympics are very dangerous skiing and what's the other one tobogganing they, they use these large toboggans and they travel at such a high speed oh yes is it called it's called luge isn't it isn't it called luge that thing where you slide at very high speed I'm sure it's called luge or am I getting those two things confused maybe Carmen is here with me and she says that you are excellent thank you Carmen all I can say is you have very very good taste as you can see we are live right now it is just after 20 past one sorry 20 past two <laughs> on a Sunday I've had a very busy day and I have a busy week coming up as well lots of things coming up don't forget this week the week that is about to arrive it is Valentine's Day yes the 14th of February we will be having a look at some love words and some phrases to do with love yes we will be looking at those a little bit later on with an excerpt from one of my English lessons also we will be taking a look at some English questions as well in fact in around about five minutes we will look at some English questions Mr Duncan I am Zainab oh Zainab hello Zainab thank you for joining me today many many people already on the live chat it's so nice to see you all here greeting me live so he so he Choi says hello Mr Duncan here the weather is getting warmer since last weekend well all I can say is you are very lucky because we have more snow more snow is on the way it's going to get very cold and snowy we have lots of snow in Kiev Kiev now and that comes from Eugene thank you Eugene yes it looks as if we are going to get your snow Eugene <laughs> so it's your fault you are sending the snow to us I think yes Mr Duncan the Olympic Games have begun in Pyeongchang in my country did you guys watch the opening scenes yes I did I actually sat down with my mum this week so I went over to see my lovely mummy and we sat watching the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games I must admit the effects were amazing did you enjoy all of those those 3d effects over the stadium they were amazing I, wa I wasn't actually sure how they did it but they were they were really really quite impressive it was a wonderful opening ceremony hello Mr Duncan I am Susanna from Corboda or Cord Cordoba in Argentina it is 11 o'clock in the morning well now of course it is 11 25 in the morning in Argentina and it is it is cloudy and fresh only 19 degrees <laughs> I suppose that that might be quite mild for some people Nahada says peace peace yes I think that's a good word to use this week it was such a lovely moment wasn't it now there are a few skeptical people and a few people who are against the unification this week of North and South Korea but between you and me I thought it was lovely 
isn't it nice to see something positive for a change instead of all the the miserable negative news so i thought it was lovely why are there christmas lights in your room <laughs> well these might look like christmas lights but they're not they're they're mr duncan's studio lights it is a way of making everything look bright and cheerful you have an itchy back yes i do i don't know why sometimes you you get itches in places that you can't reach i need something to put down my back so i can scratch my back easily i need a back scratcher back scratcher back scratcher i need a back scratcher what does bewilderment mean bewilderment means to be so impressed by something or maybe you are slightly confused be some because of the impact of something so if something has a great impact on you and it confuses you you might be a little bit bewildered you are overwhelmed by something you are bewildered so yes it is possible to be bewildered by something many people asking now where is mr steve mr steve is on his way he will be here at around about about three o'clock okay if you don't mind mr steve will be coming very soon so don't panic don't worry mr steve will be here <laughs> can you see my microphone let me just move that because it's so unprofessional <laughs> so unprofessional i like to be professional you see hello mr duncan from egypt i love your english lessons thank you nor noni or noni thank you very much for that wow there are so many so many people on the live chat i think i could spend two hours just saying hello to everybody because there are so many people here today thank you very much it's so nice to see so many people here my husband and i will be missing you next sunday yes i'm sorry about that i have a lot of things to do during this week there is of course valentine's day i'm expecting to get lots of valentine's cards also i'm not supposed to tell you this i've been told not to tell you this but there is something that i want to tell you about it's mr steve's birthday next week mr steve's birthday on friday it's true but don't tell mr steve that i told you because he said don't mention my birthday so it is mr steve's birthday next week okay so if you want to say happy birthday to him and give him a nice surprise feel free yes we will miss you next sunday i'm sorry about that i have such a busy week coming i don't know why this particular month is proving to be very busy indeed so yes i have so many things to do hello from iraq i'm very fond of you thank you ahmed ahmed a saud thank you very much you are welcome yes <laughs> to be disorientated or confused normally after being shocked or being in a situation that you don't understand you can be bewildered something can be bewildering bewildering will you and mr steve do a nice snowman next week yes well i don't know because next week i'm quite busy so i might not have time i'm hoping that my new computer will arrive next week unless of course we have too much snow so we'll have to wait and see sard mr duncan what what will you do with your old computer and why don't you sell them on the internet well what i'm going to do i'm going to keep the old computer i won't be able to use it but i will be keeping it in storage just in case so i never like to get rid of things if i think they are going to be useful later i don't like to waste things either so maybe that old computer can be used for something else later so 
yes I, I won't throw it away I won't sell it I will keep it just in case hello mr. Duncan you will not be live streaming next week no Xena I won't be here next Sunday but I will be here the following Sunday so after next Sunday the 25th will be my next live stream on Sunday because I have lots of things to do including build my new computer I've got to install the computer I've got to get it all working I've got to make sure everything functions I also have to learn how to use a new operating system because the computer I have now uses Windows 7 and I've got really used to that so I love using Windows 7 it's a lovely very simple operating system so the the operating system in my new computer will be Windows 10 which apparently looks very different and I haven't used it yet so I'm going to have to get used to using the new operating system as well so lots of things to do over the next few days Mr. Duncan I'm wondering if someone considers curling as an exciting sport oh yes of course curling now that is normally done on ice and what you do you you push you push these big heavy weights uh, I think they're called stones is that true is that right am I right I think they call the big things that they push they call them stones and you have to get the stones into a certain position and then the other person has to try and push your stone away I think that's how it works <laughs> and then first of all they, they they throw a small stone called I think it's called a puck a puck and they throw they, they push that along the ice and then you have to get your stone as near to the small puck as possible so that's curling but some people say that it's very boring I don't know there is a certain amount of skill involved I'm sure Mr. Duncan oh I've just had my breakfast with my lovely mug I bought years ago in Canterbury oh thank you Sukat Sukat remembering your time in England Canterbury a very beautiful place so you've had your breakfast I haven't eaten much today I'm a little bit hungry to be honest I'm a little bit hungry Korea is one country that has amazing film production I think they use it for the winter Olympic ceremony yes I was very impressed by the opening ceremony at the Winter Olympics during the week quite amazing and of course there is lots of good music as well coming from Korea so th does anyone out there know K-pop are you into K-pop because there are lots of groups lots of pop singers uh, and lots of boy bands and of course girl bands as well K-pop Korean pop music does this red phone behind you work yes it does it does do you want me to show you my, my phone behind me really does work hello get me the president the president of the United States I want to talk to him now can I talk to him please yes is he busy what's he doing he's playing golf oh okay then I'll call back later bye bye have a nice day sadly the president isn't available at the moment that's a shame Mr Duncan I'm from Kurdistan in Iraq says Hatao Omar hello and it's nice to see so many people watching from that part of the world I get lots of people writing and viewing and leaving comments from Iraq so a big hello to you hello from Turkey Suhandan is here hello Suhandan thank you very much for joining me 
and of course I have been to Turkey I've been to Turkey twice and there are some lessons on my YouTube channel as well for you to watch I am reading Agatha Christie at the moment oh yes a crime writer a mystery crime writer Agatha Christie yes I always remember murder on the Orient Express <gasps> a brilliant story I won't tell you what happens at the end <laughs> but someone is murdered during the story a question Mr Duncan I'm reading Ag Agatha Christie in English and I found on the morrow is it used nowadays or is it an old expression well when we say the morrow we mean the next day so on the morrow the following morning or the following day so the morrow and that's why we say tomorrow so tomorrow means to the next day so morrow in old English means the next day so the following day to morrow I hope that explains it for you I feel like singing now I was talking about k-pop just and now I want to talk now I want to do some singing <laughs> why why is Mr Steve coming instead of he will come well he's coming he's on his way he's coming if he's coming it means he's he's on his way so he's coming and he will come so he will be here he will come he is coming he's on his way <laughs> I don't know where from <laughs> hello from Valencia in Spain oh hello there hello to Spain I know I have many many viewers in Spain in fact I have quite a few viewers across Europe as well Peru is here now hello to Peru thank you very much for joining me would you like to see some excerpts from one of my ask Mr Duncan lessons would you okay then let's have a look right now saying each word slowly then each time you repeat the sentence do it a little quicker What is the difference between by me and by myself? This question comes from Dario in Italy. I guess you are referring to something you have done or created. In this type of sentence, the meaning is very similar. By me means I did it, and by myself means I did it all alone, without any help. Both sentences refer to just you this dress was designed by me I designed this dress by myself of course we can also say this dress is my design remember also that by myself means I'm alone thanks Dario for the question and for the beautiful photos of your hometown of Palermo how do I speak English with confidence and speed and who do I practice with these questions were sent in by Fazia in Saudi Arabia Hicham in Italy and Tom from Laos in Southeast Asia I have grouped these questions together as they are common ones to speak any language you need to feel comfortable doing it to do anything confidently you need to tell yourself that you can do it building confidence takes time 
Try recording your voice and then listening to it. Get used to the sound of your own voice. Look at yourself in the mirror while speaking. Watch your mouth as you say the words. It may feel strange at first, but as you get used to doing it and seeing yourself using English, then your nervousness should, over time, fade away. To improve the speed of your speech, you need to have some sentences written down, which you must read out loud regularly. Start off by saying each word slowly. Then, each time you repeat the sentence, do it a little quicker, a little faster. See how many times you can repeat it before you have to stop. Practicing speaking fast is also a good way of building your confidence. Don't forget to have fun while doing it. Here is a great passage to practice with. Every day and every night, I speak out loud without a fright. My words are clear, my speech is strong. Now I hardly ever go wrong. The more I do, the more I know. My English skills will grow and grow. Write that sentence down and try to repeat it as fast as you can. So, you can practice English almost anywhere and at any time. It is up to you. Of course, a common problem is having no other person to practice with. Fortunately, thanks to the internet, we now have many opportunities to share our love of English with others. Social sites such as Facebook and Bebo, and live link software such as Skype, Windows Live and Yahoo Messenger are allowing people to get together online and actually talk to each other. Many computer users are creating organized forums and interactive websites which allow people from different nations to express and share their love of the English language. How do I use ING? How do I use prepositions? When do I use phrasal verbs? These three questions come from Vinicius in Brazil. For today, I will answer one of those questions. ING, or the ING sound, comes at the end of words that define an action. For example, with verbs such as walk, talk, wave, and sit. He is walking. She is talking. They are waving. I am sitting. The action is happening at that moment. It is raining. Now it is snowing. ING also appears at the end of qualitative adjectives such as amazing, interesting, exciting and puzzling. As for phrasal verbs and prepositions, I will be taking a close look at how both of these are used in future lessons. So keep a lookout for those. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to get my computer fixed so everything will be back to normal. <laughs> Sorry about the slight technical problems there, but there you go. You can see now how difficult it is at the moment for me to do anything on that broken computer. I'm sorry about that, but hopefully in two weeks time we will have a lovely new computer and everything will be OK again. I really, really hope so. Have you seen the athlete from a small country called Tonga? He was shirtless and very cold. Yes, I saw him. And he, he had all 
it looked like he, <laughs> he had baby oil all over his body what was that all about I, I'm glad he didn't slip over because if he fell over he would just slide along the ice with all of that baby oil on his body yes I did see him he looked very shimmery and I guess he was very cold as well Mr Duncan please write a story please write a story called one good turn well, I have actually written a story called One Good Turn and it is on my YouTube channel. The Winter Olympics is not so popular with many people because a great number of us in the world do not understand the winter sports and will never get a chance to do these sports as a hobby, says Tomek. I suppose so. Yes, I think the view that many people have of the Winter Olympics is that it's not as interesting or as exciting as the Summer Olympics. Now, I think some of the sports are exciting, especially the ones where <laughs> where you could get very, very seriously injured, like skiing. I think skiing is one of the most dangerous sports there is. I mean, you think of all the people who've been injured and, dare I say, killed skiing. I've never done it. And I just say now that I've never done skiing. I've never tried to ski on snow or ice or anything for that matter. I have tried ice skating, which also isn't very easy. It's not very good for your ankles. So if you're not careful, you, you can slip and, and twist your ankle. So I, I have tried ice skating, but I've never tried snow skiing. Does that look like I'm skiing? So that's skiing. There I am. I'm skiing. I'm I'm on the piste, as they say. Why isn't Mr. Steve there? Where is he? Mr. Steve will be here very soon. Just have some patience, my pretties. Have some patience. <laughs> yes, I had a slight problem. Sorry about the technical problem, but there will be some solutions on the way, hopefully in the next few days yes some people don't think that the winter olympics is interesting but i thought it was very good i loved the opening ceremony i was most impressed i thought it was amazing do you know mr duncan that indonesia the badminton team the men's badminton team have won a gold medal already wow already thank you tias for that no i didn't know that I haven't been following the Olympics today because, well, I've been a little bit busy, to be honest. So that's the reason why. Gabrielle. Oh, Gabrielle wants to talk about K-pop. Ah, so there is BTS and also EXO and To Anyone. Uh, they are they are the best pop bands in Korea so a lot of k-pop bands normally now I've noticed that a lot of these Korean pop stars or, or boy bands that they, they seem to look very I want to say androgynous I I'm sure I will get lots of complaints about that but but sometimes it's very hard to tell if they're boys or girls because they tend to wear a lot of makeup I'm sure I will get a lot of complaints about that. Here, here, Mr. Duncan, how dare you say that Korean pop stars look like girls? That isn't what I'm saying. But sometimes they look very androgynous. Androgynous means a, a sort of mixture. So you can't quite tell what the gender of a person is. So please don't shout at me. Please don't scream or complain. But I, I sometimes think, I'm not sure, is that a boy or a girl? Is that a male or a female? I'm not sure. There is so much makeup. The Winter Olympics are on at the moment, yes. According to Belarusia, I am a genius. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Oh, because I got my computer to work today. Yes, it took me a, a very long time. 
for a moment I thought I wasn't going to be here today because my computer wasn't working I'm sorry about that you really must come to Argentina and see the Cataratas del Iguazu in northeast Argentina and in the very south El Calafate I hope I've pronounced that right they are very beautiful places and very different from each other oh I'm so proud where do you come from Delphian where do you come from where is Delphian from Orn Ahmed is here watching in India yes I have lots of people watching in India hello to you as well oh Shira Blade is here hello Shira Blade I haven't seen you for a very long time where have you been Dale Delphian you are from Samarang Samarang thank you very much for getting back in touch Dilcia or Dilcia says hello I'm watching you from Honduras good morning thank you Dilcia or Dilcia thank you very much and a big hello to Honduras I don't often say hello to your part of the world hello today I have time for the best professor ever do you mean me oh I wish I was a professor yes um Sukat has reminded me that Liam Neeson the the action movie star his wife actually died from a skiing accident she, so she was skiing and she fell and she actually died and of course there is there is another person as well I can't remember his name he's a racing driver he's a racing driver I want to say um, is it Senna maybe maybe you will correct me Mr Duncan I would like you to create simple dialogues well that's a good idea but the problem is if I make things too simple I normally get complaints and if I make things a little harder I also get complaints so sometimes it's very hard to <laughs> to please everyone I'm happy to see that you're working again or your computer is working again hello Helena thank you very much for that apparently I am the best English teacher on earth thank you very much for that you are very kind and that comes from Orn Ahmad by the way could you say that again later when Mr Steve is here because I always like to do that you see when he's next to me so could you please send some more messages to say Mr Duncan you are so amazing you are incredible and then I will read them out to Mr Steve and then we can watch his face as he goes Blech. By the way, it's Mr. Steve's birthday on Friday, next Friday. So don't forget to say happy birthday to him <laughs> next Friday. Oh, and don't forget on Wednesday, it is Valentine's Day. Yes, we have a lesson all about love coming very soon. Mr. Duncan, I'm watching you from Colombia, says Lucy Garzon. Thank you very much for joining me. Mr. Steve is just six minutes away. So Mr. Steve will be here and he has been very busy this week as well. And I have a feeling next week he's going to be very busy because it's his birthday. Mr. Duncan, I'd like to know your way to talk is normal in English. Yes, it is. The way I speak, it's not unusual. There are people who speak like me. There are people who have accents. There are people who have different ways of pronouncing words. Or maybe they have words that are what we call regional words. Or maybe there are accents that only exist in certain places. So I am not a typical English speaker but I am an English speaker so there are many ways of speaking English just the same way in which people speak in the United States if you go to the United States you will find that people speak English in different ways there as well Mr Duncan 
Oh yes, it was Schumacher. Yes, well, well done. Yes, Schumacher is the the racing driver who also had a skiing accident, and now now he is in a very bad way. I think he's he was in a coma, and I think his family is taking care of him now. But yes, you're right. It was Schumacher. Thank you very much for that information. Are you going to cook pancakes on Pancake Day? Ah, maybe. It depends. It depends. First of all, it depends if my computer's working by then. <laughs> so, yes, last year. Do you remember last year? I actually did a live stream when I was making pancakes. Mr. Steve will be here in five minutes. In fact, I can see him in the distance. He's he's on one of the hills far away. Hello, Mr. Duncan. When is your birthday? Oh, my birthday. My birthday is a long way off. So my birthday isn't until August. You have to wait until August for my birthday. And my birthday is on the 12th of August. They always call it the glorious 12th. Isn't that nice? I love the way you and Mr. Steve speak and teach us English. You are both awesome. Thank you very much to Guadalupe. Guadalupe, you are more than welcome. Please, can you send me some nice messages when Mr. Steve is with me? Because it, it always irritates him. <laughs> I will cross my fingers and I will help that you save me, Mr. Duncan. Maybe you can remember two lessons before you said this and I used... Oh, I got 10 out of 10 for the exam. Oh, Suhandan, I remember now. Yes, because you were taking your exam the next day and and I was crossing my fingers for you. So you got 10 out of 10. Well done. Thank you very much for, for letting me know. You are the best English teacher and I am pre-intermediate. Well, the only way is up for you. The only way is up. That's a good song, that is. Do you remember that song? The only way is up, baby, for you and me now. Sorry about that. I couldn't resist. Mr. Duncan from Costa Rica, our tropical paradise. Yes. Thank you, Randall, for that. I'm sure the weather at the moment where you are is very nice indeed. Yes, I think so. Yes, you can cross your fingers. And that means that you hope that something good will happen or something will go as planned. So you can cross your fingers. You can also touch wood. So if you touch wood, <laughs> because my head is made of wood, you see, that's a joke. I wish you can see me, says Jiang. Jiang Tran Fuang says, I wish you can see me. Well, who knows? Maybe in the future, after I get my new computer, you might be able to talk to me live on camera. Yes, we are getting very technical here. Very technical. I wonder if you would sh to share with you my best professor. I've got a passport and permission to travel to the USA this year. And I'm going to visit the USA and also England. So thank you, Mr. Duncan. I'm talking a little. Thank you, Shearer Blade, for that. And good luck with your travels. So you, you will be going to the USA and maybe to England as well. Wow. I hope you have a good time there. Hello, Mr. Duncan. How to use join and enjoy. Well, first of all, they are completely different words. So join means to to arrive and mix with people who are already in one place. You might join something or you become a member of something. Maybe you become a member of a group. So you join them or maybe you you will join a group of people who are eating. So you join them. So you arrive and then you become one group. So you join. 
or you join in enjoy means to have a good time or to get pleasure from something so you enjoy it you enjoy doing it you enjoy the feeling you enjoy the activity hello mr duncan joseph fix is here so many people are here today that i haven't seen for a long time so hello joseph fix i haven't seen you for ages it is now coming up to three o'clock mr steve is on his way and today we are talking about something very interesting i hope it will interest you because it certainly interests me and of course we'll be having a look at some of the words that we didn't get to see last week so mr steve was very insistent he was saying mr duncan you had better let me talk about the words that i prepared last week he got quite violent in fact yes not not many people know that he can get very violent he can give you quite a quite a a hard slap trust me hello from istanbul oh hello istanbul hello to turkey i will join the live stream and i enjoy it is that right yes you join the live stream and you enjoy it here he is at three o'clock precisely he is on time which makes a nice change it is mr steve <sighs> cheers hello mr duncan hello mr. hello world of english <laughs> where do you want me to stand well roughly where you are now <laughs> if you could stand where you are now down there for later in case my voice goes oh mr duncan i'm in a very tranquil happy and i would say just a nice mood today i'm just feeling very calm and relaxed well that's good to hear <laughs> yes so outside it's anything but it is so windy stormy and windy i was saying earlier it is it's so windy at the moment and as i mentioned earlier it looks as if we have more snow on the way heavy snow is coming and apparently it's coming from from i think it's across europe some of some of the cold areas maybe actually i think it's coming from siberia well that's it's always cold and snowy in Siberia. Do you don't want to know? Do you want to know why I'm so calm today, Mr. Duncan? Why are you so calm today, Mr. Steve? It's related to the subject that you've asked me to talk about. <laughs> do, is... do you have to move in that strange way? <laughs> Shall we both do that? Yes, Steve, oh. please, please tell me what you want to talk about today. This does not look weird. This looks perfectly normal. Have you talked about the subject that I might mention today, Mr. I, Duncan? I haven't mentioned it yet, Mr. Steve. I thought I would wait until you arrived and then you could talk about it yourself. Why are you moving around in that strange way? Because you are. That's because I'm calm and relaxed because <laughs> I have been meditating. <laughs> Practicing yoga. Oh, OK. Relaxing my mind and body in preparation for the uh, the stress and onslaught of appearing live with you <laughs> uh, to uh, the entire world. Is it is it really that stressful doing this? Calm, peace, tranquility. What? Do you mind disturbing my peace? Do I mind disturbing? No, I don't. I don't mind disturbing you. No, I quite enjoy it. <laughs> Before anyone asks, I haven't taken any uh, drugs of any description. <laughs> no, pure. Nobody mind thinks control. Why would you even mention that? No, but no one thinks that you've been taking drugs. But we did mention something last week because we did a surprise live stream during the week, didn't we? And and we briefly talked Indeed. about meditation. Because our, our neighbours next door, our next door neighbours, the neighbours that live right next to us. <clears throat> I think yes. we've, I think we've cleared that up. They, they said, Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve, would you like to come 
to a yoga class and I, and I, I wasn't very keen in fact my face <laughs> because they knew straight away that I wasn't keen because my face went he's very rude uh, exact that's exactly what I did uh, sometimes I can't hide my feelings normally uh, in social uh, situations when uh, somebody says something you don't agree with you don't always immediately <laughs> express your disagreement I, I can't in order to keep you know just the wheels of, of, of good nature going but not Mr. the wheels Duncan. of good nature I've never heard that expression well when you know don't know people very well you don't normally just disagree with them straight away oh I think what you mean is like social etiquette social etiquette you just you know you don't disagree with them straight away you would sort of maybe not comment or say something tactfully but not you Mr Duncan you just screw your face up and they have absolutely uh, no doubt as to what you're really thinking yoga <laughs> like that that's that's exactly what I did and and, and, and the, the, the man the husband mm. said oh clearly clearly you're not very keen on it <laughs> so he knew straight away that I wasn't keen but they tried to persuade you because mm. you are very into it Steve is into all of this meditation and and staying very calm and relaxed he, even though for most of the time you would never believe it <laughs> yes well I think I identified many years ago that I've got the sort of a personality that tends to worry a lot and stress over uh, events imaginary or or real and I think that the only way to calm your brain down is to develop some kind of exercise technique uh, that uh, that helps you. Otherwise, you 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 spill over into disorder. Yes, <laughs> it can very easily. You can start worrying, and then you start ruminating over things. <laughs> ruminating. That is an amazing word. That that might be a word that I haven't heard for about twenty years. Ah, ruminate. Yes. Well, I've got it on one of my cards oh, today. Oh, Mr. Steve's got that <laughs> word. <laughs> I'm throwing them in, tossing the words in. So please stay tuned to find <laughs> out what ruminate. Yeah, but everyone will be looking it up but on course, Google. You know what? So it's, they'll be telling us what it means. You know what it sounds like. Like. it sounds like room mate but it no. isn't room mate it's ruminate so what have you been talking about while I've been waiting to come on I have basically been talking about next week because next week is very busy it's Valentine's Day it is on Wednesday it's Valentine's Day I wish you'd keep which would you wouldn't keep moving he's obsessing about the microphones again of course we have to make sure the sound is good 100 percent you know i've got you said you had a tickle in your throat didn't you mm -hmm. earlier on in the week and i've got it now so i'm slightly annoyed that i've picked up a slight cold and i don't <laughs> want that so because you know every week you say this and then and then you don't get anything i think you're a bit of a hyper oh, i have got some you're a hypochondriac so i'm not forcing my voice i'm just gently talking today and staying calm so Wednesday we have uh, we have Valentine's Day I have a, a, a short excerpt from one of my English lessons coming up a little bit later on all about the subject of love ah so that's coming later and also something very special is happening on Friday because it is Mr Steve's birthday I didn't want you to tell people <laughs> that it was my birthday on Friday, Mr. Duncan. It's true. Steve said, don't tell anyone. Don't mention it today that it's my birthday. Of course, that's the worst thing you can say to me. Never tell me not to say something because the first thing I'll do is say it. And you just have. I've said it many times already. So lots of people want to say happy birthday to Mr. Steve oh, oh thank you very much so yes uh, I can't find the messages now <laughs> that's <laughs> what good, you isn't? told them before I told them earlier oh I see not just then earlier mm. yes don't ask me what age I am oh Nadi Nadi Sopage says please mention my name okay uh, Nadi hello to you I'm trying to find hello oh here we go we've got some lovely messages about me oh isn't this nice Mr Duncan walks on the earth and is a great teacher thank you Gabrielle 
are you enjoying the, the nice things that are being said about me Steve <laughs> I'm sure they're deserved mr. Duncan mr. Steve how are you today are you okay I hope <laughs> we are going to take a look at mr. Steve yes mr. Steve is here right now can you see him voila I know sometimes his face looks like the moon but <laughs> the full moon the full moon <laughs> Ha 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 you are a pair says sue cat we are a pair you are a not pair a pair of what a pair of what yes i, is, I uh, the question yes we'll, we'll leave that till another time i think mr duncan don't speak much but read my message faster well i will try but there are lots of other people on the live chat yes so we I, I like to explain this every week <laughs> so that people know that we get lots and lots of messages and sometimes there are so many that we can't just read them all sometimes there's like one a second coming in is yeah. that right mr duncan one a second well at the moment there are literally every second every there's second. a new there's Which a new message fantastic it is so apologies if we can't read out everything that everybody says fatima uh, says happy birthday mr steve for next thank friday you, fatima. thank you mr mr steve's birthday next week 21 How, again 21 again wow <laughs> that's what we say <laughs> isn't it 20 it's almost 21 21 twice and then half again not far off um peace meditation swan is watching now swan during the week noticed that i made a lesson in much wenlock and eventually i moved to the same place so so making my own lessons has actually influenced me as well with my decisions in life you mean you made a you made a lesson in much wenlock before you moved to much wenlock yes that's oh, true I didn't know that didn't well you moved here as well I know but I didn't know you'd made a lesson before yes that's the reason why why we you live here to. now that's the whole reason why if it wasn't for that lesson that I made during the 2012 Olympics I wouldn't now be standing here oh, yes the lesson about the origin of the modern Olympic Games yes of course because the, yes. the first modern Olympics were held here in much wenlock i love your classes mr duncan. mr duncan took part rita rita gomez is here thank you very much happy birthday for steve says julie another one of my regular viewers so thank you julie julie says happy birthday for next week Please and say i look 21 steve your accent is lovely says colin hull thank you colin and whereabouts are you I could We'd like to know. Oh, apparently your accent is so amazing. I could hear you read and pass out. Oh, oh I often do that myself when I listen to my own voice. <laughs> I'm only joking. That's not very modest. I think today, because I'm talking in a more peaceful, maybe it sounds slightly seductive. I don't know. <laughs> if there's one word I would, <laughs> if there's one word I would never use to describe your voice it's seductive oh mr duncan many people beg to differ okay let's try it then so so imagine it's valentine beg to differ Ugh, imagine it's explain that now <laughs> i said many people beg to differ and i thought you might want to explain that expression as this is an english lesson so let's see how <laughs> seductive your voice is so imagine it's valentine's right. day and you are trying to 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 give your 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 lover or the person you have your eye on you want to seduce them so you have to use your your best voice and also you have to use a very good chat up line a chat up line so a line something that you say that will will make them go oh i like you so much because of the way you speak and what you said so come on, Mr. Steve, show us this seductive voice of yours. Oh, darling, it's so wonderful to be here tonight in this restaurant, having a meal with you, gazing into your beautiful eyes, looking at your soft skin. Please spend the rest of your life with me. Looking at your soft <laughs> skin? 
I, I I love looking at your soft skin. Oh, well, I wasn't going to go too far because we can't say much these days. What are you, are you talking to a human being or a peach? <laughs> it sounds like he's chatting up a, a fruit. Not for the first time. I sent you a lot of messages, but you don't read them, says Roa Yosef. Well, because we keep saying that sometimes they go so fast. <laughs> this is what we the mess read all the messages. Let me just show you now how fast the messages go. That's how fast the messages go. So I'm very sorry if I don't see your message, but they do We've go. We've just seen it now, though. We've they just do seen it now. They do go by very quickly. Do persevere. <laughs> Nikita. Hello, Nikita. Thanks for your message. There's yes. A song about the answer Nikita. is. The answer is yes. I'm very happy birthday, Mr. Steve, for next week. I Thank am. Thank you. Nikita, who wrote that? There's a song. Nikita. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Well, I don't know the rest of it, but tell me who the singer is. Apparently, the, the... there's a song called Nikita. By Elton John. Elton John. That's the one. Hang on. I said it. I was just waiting for you to, you know, I knew it, obviously. You did not know it. <laughs> you had no idea. There's a song about you, Nikita. You did not know. Nikita, you will never know. I think it goes. Oh, Nikita, you will never know just how much I love your skin. I don't <laughs> think it went like that. Do you have lovely skin? Yes. That's, that's a great chat up yeah. line. Well, I think women love to have that as well. And, and men, probably. <laughs> to say what, you know, smooth, lovely skin. Of course, ah, well, that was interesting. That was on the news today about uh, uh, men using more and more makeup. Yeah, men putting makeup on. And we, I was talking about this earlier because um, I was talking about Korean mm. pop stars. Oh, and I, right. And sometimes it is very hard to tell the difference between male pop stars in Korea and female because sometimes the men look very feminine or or the word is androgynous they, so they look kind of in between so do you think we look androgynous <laughs> I don't think so we, we are definitely not androgynous we're, we're many other things many other things but not androgynous <laughs> Mr. Steve, if you come to Brazil, I yes. I can keep teach you some Portuguese. Ah. Or sometimes I, I say Portuguese, but I don't mean to say that, but Portuguese. Ah, well, you know full well, Mr. Duncan, that I have said on many occasions that I would like to go to Brazil. This must be at least the fourth time I've said it. Is that not correct? It is the uh, <laughs> many, many. I want to go to the rainforests. Many, many times. Many, many times. Yes, you really do want to go to Brazil. Apparently, David Bowie or David Bowie, depending on how you pronounce his name. Apparently, mm. yes, he sometimes looked very androgynous. So he used to wear lots of makeup. He had lots of different styles, different personas over the years and yes he used to wear a lot of makeup and of course back then in the 1960s and early 1970s it was very unusual for men to wear makeup I won't but, tell you what my uh, father used to say about men wearing makeup and what, having long hair what did your dad <laughs> say about men that wore makeup and had long hair did he say something really rude well let's just say that uh, when my father grew up and uh, of course many people of that generation men were men and women were women and uh, <laughs> there was no crossover between the two so uh, just as if a woman uh, was acting manly or a man was acting quite in a feminine way Ooh. then uh, it would be uh, let's put it this way it would be discussed and uh, would be disapproved of Mm. Um, certainly men acting like women or behaving like women, wearing makeup, having long hair, which was very popular in the 1970s. Uh, men having very long hair. Yes. Uh, and of course, the Beatles started it all off in the 60s. They the Beatles have... didn't have long hair. No, but they had hair that which was of a it was getting long. No men. Yeah, no men in the 1960s had basically their hair was just. A short back and sides. It was just very, very short, a bit like mine, really. But that's not long. 
I know, but or they might have had a parting, but like the Beatles, they had it very styled. And then in the 70s, it got long down to your shoulders. Maybe Mick Jagger. And, uh, Mick, Mick Jagger Mick probably Mick Jagger had it. long yes. hair. Yes, so you were deriding me, and yet there was truth behind my words. But, but you said the Beatles had long hair, but they didn't. Well, some of them did. They called them mop tops. Later because... on, they had long hair. Yes, but they went through a phase, yes, where they became hippies. Yeah, exactly. Hippies. I was right. So that's what, maybe that's what your dad used to call them. They used to say, uh, uh, those long-haired youths, what a bunch of hippies. Uh. I'm not going to say what my father used to. Hey, guess yes. what, though, Steve? Guess what? Because a lot of hippies were very much into meditation. Well... They were into maybe drug-induced meditation. <laughs> well, yes, but at least they ended up in the same place. So so meditation is kind of the same as taking a lot of drugs. But of course, first of all, it's not illegal. And secondly, taking drugs won't kill you. So I don't think anyone's ever died from meditating. You unless just said taking drugs won't kill you. No, I said it will. Oh, right, no, I said okay. meditating won't kill you. No, I think I think you actually said drugs work. But anyway, we'll look at that on the replay. OK, let me just clear this up for if just in case there's anyone watching who wants to be really pedantic. OK, <laughs> that's quite a big point, actually. OK, then. So p pedantic people will say, Mr. Duncan, drugs are bad. OK, so, yes, illegal drugs. If you take too many, you'll end up dead. But uh, and, and if you meditate, you won't end up dead unless, of course, you're driving your car and you're meditating. So never, never meditate and drive your car at the same time. It's it's not good. Don't do it. And actually, if you okay. do too much meditation, you, you lose sight of, uh, of reality and you can actually become can be quite dangerous for you. <clears throat> My voice is uh, quite bad today, Mr. Duncan, so I'm not going to talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> promises, promises. So we are talking about meditation. Um. Well, sort of words around that, words related to that sort of Eastern mysticism and that sort of thing. I prepared a few little words that we can uh, that we can show your viewers. So where did meditation originate from? I always think it's um, I always think mm. meditation is kind of. Uh, an Indian thing so m maybe I'm just wrong there you see so I'm sure someone will correct me I always assume I always have the feeling that the the original teachers uh, of meditation were, were actually from India but I might be wrong there because of course you have Buddhists don't you as well that do a lot of meditating you're talking to me or your viewers I'm talking to <laughs> I'm talking to you and my viewers so so yes Yes, well, yes, meditation goes back thousands of years. The, the, the sort of meditation that we uh, talk about now does have its origins, really, you know, 6,000 years ago in, uh, in Indian culture. That's a long time ago. Uh, the H Hindu religion, it sort of uh, originates from that. But really, meditation as such uh, is present in, in a lot of religions, and but it takes different forms. Uh, meditation that we tend to talk about in uh, Western culture, uh, though, has, uh, has sort of had the religious uh, spiritual overtones removed and it tends to be just used as a method of calming the mind uh, without having those religious or spiritual uh, overtones which, of course, would be associated with Hindu Hinduism or Buddhism. Mm. I think that's where the confusion uh, comes, though, isn't it? Because it, it's, it's a thing, it's an activity that has its origins in religion. Well, certainly in... Uh, yes, it does, yeah, it does. Hindu religion, yeah. But nowadays, a lot of people go to, say, yoga classes, so they're not being taught any, any religious text or any religious prayers, but they are being given instruction on a part a certain part of what would be that religion yes and uh, and uh, uh, Christian religion uh, the, the you talk about meditation there but that's actually prayer mm. so meditation let's let's actually look at the definition of it shall we because it's a bit like praying without being religious so you're praying but you're not actually following any religion. So I find that quite fascinating. So so yoga 
and meditation oh. has actually sort of be become its own thing over the years and it's very trendy to do now it's going to be quite uh, i think we're going to incite quite a lot of interest oh okay well let's start with yoga shall we let's Yo start with yoga there it is yoga it uh, yoga is physical and mental exercises which comes from ancient india and yoga just means unity so in other words well i'll explain unity in a minute so yoga takes the form of physical and also spiritual uh meditational uh purpose so that is an ancient uh form of exercises derived from uh hindu culture i believe uh, so I mentioned the word unity in there. So the word unity. So let's explain what that means. Unity is a state of being one or a unit or being whole. Unity. Uh, harmony in feeling, ideas, aims, etc. So it's about harmony, the state of one, the state of wholeness. So I suppose also a, if a group agree or they are all together on something or they agree or they share the same point of view you you might also say unity you yes or people would unite together on something uh for i mean for example you could say about you could have two political parties for example where they disagree on lots of things but there may be unity in some of the things that they discuss, for example, on on the health of the nation or, or, or on or, or on a particular bill they want to put through Parliament. They might all agree on something. So there would be unity uh, uh, to that degree. Um, the opposite of union is disunion, which is separation, disparity uh, or a lack of unity. So that's what yoga and meditation, the reason I put that up, they're trying to bring the mind and the body together into into a whole and and have union in that way. Uh, now, to meditate, if we talk about the word meditate, uh, that has we're not just talking about meditation in terms of a, a specific uh, method of calming the mind. But if you say to meditate means to th just to think deeply and quietly about something, to ponder something, to contemplate or to plan in your mind. So that's not to confuse that with meditation as such, which is a particular practice. So it's sort of generic. Yes. So if you, for example, you could say yeah, John went away for a few days to meditate on the state of his career. So if you just say for example, you could meditate over what you want to do in next week's uh, live English lesson. So cut, sit so there and think about you, it. You carefully consider or you go over something in your mind. You meditate. That's right. Whereas meditation is slightly different. That's the practice where an individual focuses their mind on a particular object, thought or activity to achieve mental clarity and emotional calm. So meditation or the practice of meditation, that's a specific, uh, a specific uh, thing that you do. So you're not just to meditate just means that you're thinking about something, whereas meditation is this act, this particular uh, an individual where you're focusing on a particular object. So you can focus on a, a mantra. People, can, uh, if you go to specific classes on meditation, they might give you a mantra or you can focus on your breath, your breathing, or you can focus on counting or looking at a candle flame. Something like that, which is brings your mind, all your mind is scattered around with all those thoughts in your head. And you're bringing your mind to concentrate on just one single thing. And uh, different people uh, use different ways of, of focusing on one particular aspect like a candle flame like your breathing like a, a, a repeated mantra to try and get your mind into a very calm state and if you do that for about 20 minutes it can empty your mind of all the worries of the day uh, and uh, if you're the type of person that 
uh, that has a, a vivid imagination or you get easily down about things and you ruminate uh, and well, I'll go into that word a bit later on Mr Duncan's already said uh, he wants me to explain the word ruminate which I will do are we getting comments Mr Duncan on this so uh, often as well there are certain ways of sitting sorry about that I was I was actually sitting on the floor trying to meditate then I was lying down flat on the floor and uh, <laughs> So meditation, that was very, very popular in the sort of 70s and 80s. It became quite popular in the UK. Transcendental meditation. There were lots of different forms of it. There were lots of classes that you would go to. Um, and you can learn it from books, but it's it's much better to go and uh, go to classes where someone's an expert at it. The modern... Uh, something called mindfulness ah this is a very uh, up-to-date word very contemporary this word you okay. hear this word used a lot in even in work you have people turning up um at conferences and they, they will even give a speech now to people members of a company or, or executives mm. or managers and they will talk about mindfulness as being something that you can use in many areas of your life yeah it's a form of uh, it's a form of meditation really it's a sort of uh, a modern form of meditation but it's a process designed to bring your attention to the present moment so that's what mindfulness is about bringing your attention to the present moment so if your uh, your mind if it's if you're anything like me i'm always very rarely in the present moment mr duncan's always saying where are you mr steve you're off thinking about something yeah it's and, with me uh, so he's with me at the time. <laughs> we're, we're, maybe we're out walking somewhere and I, I look at Steve's face and it's sort of. And I know he's I'm off somewhere. He's off somewhere else. He's not actually in the moment. And, and that's one of the things that meditation helps to do. It, it, it helps to to get you into the moment. It helps your mind to focus on the here and. Yes. Now. I mean, I'm talking about it a lot because I, I, this is just my experiences of it. I, I, I'm not an expert in it. No. Well, just we had explain. we had a lot of we had a lot of feedback the other day. A lot of people wrote to me saying it was very interesting to hear Mr. Steve's point of view about meditation. And could you talk about it in one of your live lessons? So that's what we're doing now. So it's sort of, it has its origins in uh, again in uh, in Buddhist traditions and teachings. Uh, probably Hindus as well. Uh, but yes, it's using uh, meditation techniques and other techniques to try and bring your mind back into the present moment. So if you're, I mean, it's, it's silly things like you focus on uh, uh, your, your, your body parts, like your feet, and you try and focus your attention on everything you can feel in your feet and your toes then you work your way up your legs then your arms your head and you try and focus on i mean that's very simplistic mm. you, again it's not something you can really learn properly from a book and like all these techniques and i've got lots of books on them i'll show you some here steve has read a lot of books over the years about meditation and mindfulness I'm not sure how much of it he's taken notice of. Well, this is uh, what I was about to say. There's one book on meditation. This one, actually, this is what got me started years ago, which is uh, I was staying somewhere when I was a, a student mm -hmm. and the landlady was going for these yoga classes. So ah. I was in my early 20s then and uh, I, n I didn't go along, but she gave me this book. Uh, this book was written probably in the 19, 1980s, I would, I yeah. would say. It, it looks like a simple pamphlet. It doesn't look like a proper book. Well, it's a type of <laughs> ya a yoga called, and I'll get the pronunciation right, pranayama yoga. Pranayama yoga. But there are lots of different types of yoga. This one is it, to do with breath control. Oh. I don't think it's a particularly popular one, but it became popular in the UK, sort of in the 1980s. There's a lovely line I like at the beginning of this book, near the beginning of this book. Uh, yes, where are we? 
Yes, he was the greatest exponent, talking about uh, a particular, the person that wrote this book, he was the greatest exponent of living for the moment, doing one thing at a time and periodically detaching himself from reality in order to face it. He remained forever young. So detracting yourself from reality in order to face it. I think that's a very profound statement. And are you still here, Mr. <laughs> yes, I, I'm listening. Are you detached from reality? I, I spend most of my time detached from reality, to be honest. But uh, yes, that's I think it. so you take yourself away from the world for a short period of time, 20 minutes, and that helps you to face it when you come back. Yeah. Do you know what? Another thing that I, I always think of, and Ten certainly points. when you just said that, um, I, I always think if you hold your breath, for a few seconds maybe 20 seconds and and you, you then you breathe in again you can actually smell the air you can actually smell the air it, it it's very strange that i don't know if you've noticed this so you 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 hold your breath and then you breathe in and and for some reason the, the, the breath going into your body has a different sensation and it is almost that that you become so used to to being in a certain state of mind that if you cut yourself off from it for a while and then rejoin it it almost seems fresh and new again so yeah. your at your attitude is almost re renewed yeah oh yes well breath control is one of the the, the, the main uh, uh, breath control is one of the main uh, benefits that you get or one of the main things that you can do to calm yourself down because often when you're sort of anxious in a state of anxiety or uh, upset your breathing is the first thing that goes and you start to take shallow breaths mm. but if you can concentrate and just take slow breaths and do that for a few a few minutes even 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 just a few 10 seconds or something that can often bring the calmness back yes. to you well i, I know from oh. my own experience in the past when i because I, I, I i sometimes get very anxious and i get anxiety and sometimes I have to do a little bit of breathing just to control it. So so, yes, in the past, I, I've suffered with anxiety, believe it or not. But anybody can. Anybody can. And nowadays people are more open about it. So in the past, yes, I've, I've had my my occasional spell, my occasional moment where I felt very anxious and had anxiety. You might even call it an anxiety attack. OK, it seems hard to believe, doesn't it? So you can. So anyone can feel anxious. And normally it's about everyday pressure because you were saying the other day just how how life moves so fast now. You, you almost don't get a chance to take in what's happening around you. And this is something you said. Yes. Well, in modern sort of most modern uh, societies now, it's a very fast pace uh, of, of life and uh, unless you find a way of, of escaping from that you can very easily get very anxious and caught up mm. in uh, in everyday tasks and lose the bigger picture yeah you can become uh, overwhelmed yeah you can become overwhelmed by everything some people uh, respond very well to this and they're very driving thrusting people who want to be uh, in a state of success all the time they want to be number one um but uh, eventually, quite often, it, it catches up with them because uh, you've got to have some peace of mind somewhere. Here's a book on mindfulness, mm. which I bought. Now, I, I tried to do this from the book. There was a CD with it. Uh, I, don't, I don't particularly want to promote that. That's just one. But that mindfulness is you've got to be very careful with that. I'm not going to really promote that because... Uh, it can actually have the opposite effect hmm. if you don't do it right. Meditation's fairly OK, but mindfulness, that particular technique, um, has got people into trouble. If you don't do it the right way, you can actually have psychological problems as a result of not doing it correctly. Yes, so well, all, warning alert. But all of these things are really sort of messing with your mind. You are You are kind of... It's like being underneath a car and you're trying to... To, to do something to the engine if you're not careful you can actually have the opposite effect and make the car worse or break the car completely so i think yes i think it's best to read 
the information and, and learn a little bit more about it before you start doing it it's yes. a bit like anything exercise you have to normally before you do any exercise you have to go to your doctor just to make sure that you can do it so you have to understand what it is you are about to do I think meditations are see, a lot of people aren't, aren't used to if you're not used to sitting there uh, without any stimulus either from uh, television uh, or uh, books or work or socializing a lot of people just go through their entire lives and they they never spend spend any time alone on their own and and when they're suddenly forced to do that you, with meditation or mindfulness it can actually be a very scary thing to a lot of people so if if you're that sort of person you want to start doing meditation or mindfulness probably best to go and do it in a structured way with, with, with a proper teacher and a guide uh, so that you don't, uh, you know, get in, get yourself into any psychological problems. OK, Steve, uh, we're going to take a little break here. OK, to give you a to break, meditate, to do, give you a break as well, <laughs> because on Wednesday, don't forget, it is Valentine's Day. Have you got your Valentine's card ready? Are you going to say I love you to that special person in your life? Or maybe mm -hmm. perhaps you have a mystery person who is sending letters and cards to you yes. although nowadays i think we call it stalking <laughs> yes do, uh, yes i mean i don't know whether you still do but valentine's cards traditionally you didn't know who they came from did yes, you they were mystery so you you would send you them receive it for, from an anonymous person you would receive something and you didn't know who it was from but i think nowadays the way that people are reacting they are reacting to everything around them i think maybe nowadays you might say that valentine's cards might be a form of stalking or harassment so there anyway oh, we are now so. going to take a look we are now going to take a look steve at a lesson a few moments to have a little rest and then steve will be back i will be back we're going to look at a lesson all about love oh oh well mr duncan's going over to his computer love well because yes valentine's day on wednesday don't ignore what mr duncan said if you want to send a valentine's card to somebody send one <laughs> i'm not too worried about well you might upset them of course how you tell them that you uh, how you reveal to them that you've actually sent them a valentine's card i, I don't really know anyway mr duncan is now going to play a lesson on love Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, And summer's lease hath all too short a date. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, So long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. In this lesson, we will talk about something we all feel, we all need, we wish to give, but also something that can be hard to find or receive. A word that can bring both happiness and sorrow into our lives. In today's lesson, we will take a look at that magical four-letter word L-O-V-E Love
word love means a strong feeling of affection, the emotional bond between two people who are very close to each other, the physical or sexual attraction felt by one person towards another, to have an interest in something which gives you great pleasure, such as a hobby or an interest. It is a question that has been asked by mankind again and again and will continue to be so. What is love? We know that it is not tangible. It cannot be held in our hands. Yet, to most people, love is a real thing. It reaches both from us and into us. It exists in our mind, but lives in our heart. Oh, be still my beating heart. The heart is the symbol of love. There are many possible reasons for this. The heart keeps us alive and, in theory, so does the need for love. To be loved is probably everyone's goal in life, even for those who appear not to need it. To give your love is to offer something valuable and precious. Your heart is a precious thing. Without it, you cannot live. Many people would say the same thing about love. Ooh. <sighs> Sweet as a kiss on a summer's day. How does love occur? How does it develop? Well, normally, at first, two people will spend time together. They get to know each other. They go out on dates. Maybe they will go and see a movie together or go out with their circle of friends. Over time, they become closer and more intimate. As their relationship grows, so does their love. If a couple stay together for a long time, they may wish to get engaged. This makes the relationship official and usually leads to the next step, marriage. There are various types of love which have different paths and emotions connected to them. Familial love, the love of a person through a family tie, such as the love of a mother towards her son. Platonic love, a close love shared by two people, but without the sexual relationship although the earlier definition of this phrase meant something quite different. Unrequited love, a love that has been given but not returned. He loves her, but she does not love him. Puppy love, the innocent or naive love experienced by a young person. Of all the subjects ever written about in literature, love must surely be the most common one used. Many poets and authors have strived over the years to capture the essence of what love is. Many have tried and many have failed. Famous authors such as Emily Bronte, Catherine Cookson, Charles Dickens and the playwright William Shakespeare have all used the theme of love in their works. Just like any language, there are many uses of the word love to be found in English. Love struck, to be so deeply in love, you cannot think of anything else. Love child, a child born to parents who are not married. Love affair, a romantic or sexual relationship between two people who are not married. A strong enthusiasm or liking for something. Love bite, a temporary mark left on the skin caused by it being bitten or <laughs> sucked. Love handles, the bulge made by having too much fat around the waist. Love nest, a place such as a house where two lovers spend their time together sometimes in secret. Lovebirds, 
two people showing their love and affection for each other publicly for everyone to see. Possibly the most famous love story ever written tells the tale of two young lovers whose relationship causes happiness, heartache, conflict and death. It is Romeo and Juliet, written by the English playwright William Shakespeare. The famous scene where Juliet calls out to her sweetheart contains one of the most well-known lines of any story or play ever put the paper. There are many words connected to love. Affection. The feeling or action of showing that you care for another person. Romance. Any subject or action that expresses love. A romantic dinner. Smitten. To be strongly attracted to someone. She is smitten with the young man. Fancy, used informally to express an attraction to someone. I really fancy you. Enamored, to fall in love with someone. Crush, a feeling of love or an innocent attraction to someone, normally associated with teenagers. The girl has a crush on her teacher. Lovely. Something that is appealing or attractive in a special way. Passion. The need to be close to another person in mind and body. The strong desire to do something. There are many expressions for showing love. Fall in love. Begin to love someone. Head over heels in love. Deeply in love. Fall for someone. Feel love for one person. Make love. The act of sex between lovers. Worship the ground he or she walks on. To be completely devoted and in love, you will do anything to make that person happy. Fall out of love. To stop loving someone. How does it feel to be in love? When you are in love, life feels so great. Nothing else in the world matters. There is only you and your sweetheart. The days are always bright and your heart sings with joy because you have someone to hold, someone to trust and someone to love who loves you. How does it feel to lose love? When you fall out of love, it feels like the end of the world. You feel like you will die. Your heart is broken into a million pieces. Your friends will say kind words. They will tell you that everything will be okay. They say that there are plenty of other fish in the sea. But I wanted that fish and it swam away.
year all around the world, those in love get the chance to show their affection to a husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, or maybe to someone who does not even know that they are loved. For example, here in the UK, we have Valentine's Day. This happens each year on February 14th. Cards and chocolates are given as tokens of love and some couples will become engaged on this date. The words used between lovers tend to be special and are spoken as a way of showing that the other person is dear to them. Words such as angel, you are my angel. Darling, I miss you darling. Sweetheart, I love you sweetheart. Treasure, you are my treasure. Honey, kiss me, honey. Baby, call me later, baby. Precious, you are my precious. Honey bunny, hold me, honey bunny. We call these terms of endearment. Duncan, now I know all about love. As if I didn't already know. My vast experience, a lifetime of relationships. Too many to mention. <laughs> oh, Mr. Duncan, where are you? He's at the other end of the studio pressing his knobs and he'll be back here any second. In fact, here he is. You know, all of this knob twiddling is very exhausting. I could do with some meditation. I thought for a moment you were going to recite some Shakespeare then from Romeo and Juliet. Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? I've gone to the chip shop because I'm hungry. I don't think that was in Shakespeare. No, I don't think that bit. I made that last part up. So we are talking about meditation, by the way. I hope you get some nice cards. I hope you get something nice for Valentine's Day. Yes. And apparently a lot of people are going to send me special cards. I don't know how. how lovely. But apparently on Valentine's Day, I'm going to get lots of lovely love cards. Isn't that lovely? Oh, that's nice. Amid says, Mr. Duncan, how are you today? Are you happy? Yes, I'm, I'm not too bad. Very busy week coming up. We have... Valentine's Day and also Mr. Steve's birthday is on Friday. It's not that important, Mr. <laughs> Duncan, really. Uh, Mr. Steve doesn't want to talk about his birthday. That's why. Not really, because I'm getting older. <laughs> Belarusia is going now. Oh. Bela Belarusia is going. I have to Bye -bye. go now because because I'm having lunch with my brother. Oh, well, how lovely. See you later. I hope you have a nice lunch. Uh, this is my first class with Mr. Duncan, says Alex Weblar. Hello, Alex. Welcome to our big happy family. This is the place where English is spoken and you can learn new words. And of course, you can improve your confidence as well. Don't forget to tell yourself, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I thought Mr. Steve was going to join in then. No, no, right. This is where English comes alive. <laughs> it certainly does. Can I mention a word that I talked about earlier? Here is a word we mentioned earlier, and Mr. Steve is now going to talk about it. What's the word, Mr. The Steve? Word is ruminate. 
Ah. Ruminate. Ruminate. Or, or rumination would be the noun uh, version of that. That the general meaning of ruminate is to ponder, to think over something, to chew the cud. And the word comes from uh, ruminant, ruminant, R-U-M-I-N-A-N-T, which is an animal that uh, chews the cud. For example, a cow chewing away, chewing the cud, uh, which is the mashed up grass that it's got in one of its stomachs. Yes, because a, a cow, uh, not a lot of people know this, but cows have two stomachs. So first of all, they more than that. They, they they chew the grass and then they swallow it. And then a little bit later, they they bring it back up and they carry on chewing it. So I think that action is called ruminate. Yes. or chew, Well, that's called chewing the cud. So it's it's obviously a sort of a process that goes on for a long period. It looks like they're thinking when they're doing it. So that's where the word ruminate comes from. It's a bit like chewing gum. Yes, it just means uh, that you're pondering, thinking about something. Um, it, but in psychological terms, if you if you uh, uh, use that word in psychology, okay, it has a slightly darker meaning because it means that the the, the, the uh, focusing you're focusing your attentions on symptoms of stress and uh, possible causes and consequences uh, as opposed to solutions. So it's a in a psychological terms, if you're ruminating, you're, re you're really it's sort of excessive worrying, uh, I would say. Oh, he's got a plastic cow. See, I've got a cow here. I'm going to count how many stomachs this cow has. So there, can you see it? Moo! Moo! So there is a cow. I'm going to count how many, how many stomachs this cow has. One, two three four someone can tell us how many stomachs a cow has well this one has four stomachs i don't know how you can tell that from a plastic cow Mr. it's just Duncan. it told me i i, I whispered I, I can talk to the animals like dr doolittle here here miss mrs cow because it's a lady cow you see can you see there it's a lady cow uh, how many stomachs do you have I have I have four stomachs I don't think that's true some people say that they have six I don't know well apparently someone can tell us yes uh, TS says four four ah, stomachs four stomachs you see one's enough my imagine the indigestion you can get with four stomachs imagine that it's bad <laughs> enough it's bad, bad enough, enough with one. it's bad enough having one stomach so there we go too much rumination and uh, you might get, uh, I mean, you might need meditation because you're thinking, pondering things over too much. Will you get rid of that cow, please, Mr. Duncan? I'm going to milk it. So too much rumination, too much thinking, too much worrying causes stress. OK, so stress, which is a feeling of strain or pressure. I'm so stressed out. I've got so much to do at work. Mr. Duncan, you are distracting away. I'm milking the cow. There's no answer to that. Moo. I think I think she likes it. Have you finished with the plastic cow, Mr. Duncan? I might I might send this cow. I'm explaining the meaning of the word stress. I might send and this. Right now, I'm feeling more and more stressed. I might send this cow a Valentine's card. Yes, put the cow away, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> Apparently, there's an expression, holy cow. If you are surprised or shocked, you will go, oh, holy cow. Maybe that's something to do with the fact that Hindus revere cows. Stress. There we go. So that's the psychological meaning of stress. It's a feeling of strain or pressure. Uh, but uh, in linguistics, if we're talking about learning English or learning any language. You can put stress on certain syllables in a word. So, for example, if I was to say the word communicate, I would be uh, putting stress on the municate. Oh, OK. Communicate. But so if I went communicate, 
I'll be putting the stress on the first syllable. Yes. So in, in linguistics, in lingu linguistics, when you stress something in speech, it means you put the emphasis. Maybe your voice will become louder or higher. So you stress a certain word. So you could mm. you could hear there that I stressed the word stress. So there you stress something. You're stressing the whole word there. In biology, stress means uh, an organism's response to environmental conditions or a stressor. So if it's heat or cold, lack of food, uh, the, that, that's the stress and that's the, the, the organism's response to it. In mechanics, then stress is internal forces on materials. So if you're, for example, if I'm bending this piece of paper, that's causing stress to the molecules on the on the edge of that paper and I'm bending it and if you do that to metal a lot of course the stress eventually causes the metal to fail it's about it's like when an airplane takes off the the airplane takes off and there is a lot of stress on the wings so the wings will bend have you ever looked out of yeah. the window of a plane oh, I, could I could stress that enough till it breaks <laughs> have you ever looked out the window of a plane when it's taking off and, and the Don't. wings the wings bounce up and down they 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 actually bend as you look out the window so next time you're on a plane have a look at the wings and you will see they will they will they will actually bend as the the plane is flying They're through stressing as the plane flies through the sky so the wings will stress and then if you see the wings stressing you'll be getting stressed as yes, well. Yes. Definitely. Because you have too much stress you'll end up with anxiety. Will you not Mr Duncan? Yes. Which is anxiety is an emotion an unpleasant state of inner turmoil which leads to muscle muscle tension a lack of concentration and fatigue. You might have a dread of events like appearing live on Mr. Duncan's lesson. You might get heart. You might get anxious through that. Heart palpitations. You might have a dread of events. Your heart will go fast. Uh, and you might display nervous behaviour. Fear, threat or imagined. An overreaction to events which are real or imagined. It's mm. really worry that's gone too far, really. Because a lot of anxiety... Uh, quite often comes from things that aren't even happening or, or just things that you're worrying about that might happen that haven't happened so yes. anxiety can take on many forms and you will be amazed how many people suffer with anxiety as I yes. mentioned earlier this the pace of life now is so fast is so quick and more people than ever are suffering from from different forms of anxiety and stress and of course taken too far ultimately that will lead to depression oh which is uh you know there's lots of meanings actually depression we're we're talking about it in the psychological sense of, of a low mood and aversion to activity it's just a low mood that goes on for a long mm. period of time we won't get into depression too much because it's depressing to talk about depression it's very depressing uh, because this is an upbeat show but depression has other meanings in geology depression means uh, a piece of land which is sunken below the surrounding areas mm. a depression so something's below other parts of the ground uh, that's a depression and you get a depression in uh, in uh, weather mm. don't you and you get a low pressure so uh, I always get these two things confused so is is low pressure when you get the good weather or is it high pressure when you get the good weather well you you can you can get uh, it's both actually but generally speaking if it's a low pressure you will get uh, you will get rain and wind and things like that. So the low uh, pressure tends to generally be, tends to be the bad weather and the high pressure tends to be sort of sunny weather. But uh, that is not exclusively so because you can get very bad weather in high pressure as well. But anyway, usually low pressure is bad in terms of weather. Uh, so we've talked about psychological depression, uh, uh, geological depressions, and we can have uh, weather depressions we can also have economic depressions which is where there is a downturn 
in uh, economic activity. Ah, oh, yes. Over, like uh, like uh, in 1929. Yes, or 2000, and uh, we had a bit of a depression, was it 2007? 2008. Uh, 2008. So we had the financial crash, which a lot of people were saying was like the depression, the Great Depression, of course, took place in, I, I want to say 1929. I hope I'm right. It was around that time. Yes, so so the late 20s, when there was, when there was the big crash in the market, the stock markets in the United States and they're not doing too well at the moment and that they they might be on the way to another one now <laughs> maybe not a dep I don't know it's probably a correction as they call it uh, but we'll have to wait and see so yes lots of meanings of the word depression but they all sort of mean low really don't they uh, so they are all related I'm uh, I'm hungry by the way I'm very hungry in fact I'm getting quite hangry hangry ah right remember the word last week hangry so that means you feel angry and hungry at the same time are you yes. angry because you're hungry that's it i feel angry because i'm hungry it's 10 minutes past four right it's time for us to go mr I steve i can't believe it already yes the two hours has gone by so quickly i was a little bit late coming on today due to ah. certain technical problems but that'll all be solved in the very near future i hope so next week i'm hoping please keep your fingers crossed with me i hope the new computer will come next week don't forget we are not here next sunday there no. is no live stream next sunday and the reason for that is i'm hoping to be over there connecting my new computer so i have lots of things to do lots of things to to build to put together i have to learn how to use the new testing you've got to do a lot of testing i have to learn how to use the new operating system as well because it's windows 10 and i've never used that one before you see i've never it's used very clever you can you'll pick that up so we'll be back when on the 25th is that right the 25th of february 25th of february so that's the next Two, five that's the <laughs> February. <laughs> I think we've I think we've explained that quite clearly. And we'll uh, show all our, all my birthday cards. Yes, hopefully and messages that I will no doubt receive. So the next time <laughs> we are here on Sunday is the twenty fifth. Of course, there might be a little surprise live stream mm. next week, maybe on Wednesday, which is of course Valentine's Day. Ah. Ah. But the next time we'll be back together will be the 25th. So the 25th. All being, all being well. The next Sunday that we are on is the 25th. I have to say that several times because I will still have people asking me, Mr. Duncan, when are you on next? So I will say it one more time before I go. The 25th is the next time we are on Sunday. OK, so next week, no live stream. We're not here because I'm hoping to be rebuilding my studio. All of the technical things over there. Hopefully I will be repairing. <gasps> oh, it will be so nice to get back to normal. It certainly will, Mr. Duncan. Whatever normal is. And don't forget, we have snow coming on Tuesday and Wednesday. So I might even be live in the snow if we have lots of snow we will have to wait and see i'll be at work so i won't be able to be live with you but uh, it'll be exciting nonetheless okay we're going now right, we're off we're going mr steve is going to make a cup of tea and i am going over there to press the big red button that disconnects us from the internet see you see bye you bye. soon bye bye everyone see you on the 25th i'll go that way and I will also go because it's time to say goodbye. It's time to say adieu to you and you and you. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget the 25th of February is the next time we are here on Sunday. Next week, no live stream. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching me and Mr. Steve talking to you live. And of course, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Ta-ta for now.